Sometimes I wonder, do I prefer to never have had any news of a new season of Total Drama or get them and have to wait more than two years for it to come? This lack of Total Drama in my life has led me to branch out to see other shows that could appeal to me as a Total Drama fan. So I branch out to TV series, to new cartoons, to movies, to books, to books. So while we dwell on this everlasting wait for a new season of Total Drama to come, that has been already announced and hopefully it's coming soon, hopefully it's coming soon, I've decided to create this series on this channel where I talk about shows that I've watched recently that could and should feed that Total Drama craving we've been having for the past two years. So let me explain these series. If you are a Total Drama fanatic like myself, you are bound to like Total Drama for many details that are inherent to this show. You like its lore, fan service, and fan base. You like the actual good and well scripted drama. You like it because it's a spoof of reality television. You like it because of the creativity and general competition they have. And you like it because of the work the team has done with it. For each of the details that I found in Total Drama, I've set out to find shows and movies that have appealed to me as a Total Drama fan based on these inherent qualities. And for each of the topics I've mentioned, there will be a dedicated video to a dedicated show. For today's video, we are going to talk about something that I've watched and enjoyed because I like the lore, fan service, and fan base of Total Drama. And the show that I dedicate a video to is... Campamento Desventura or Desventure Camp as it's known for English audiences. Campamento Desventura is a 100% fan-made show that follows the formula of Total Drama. People come to a camp, they do challenges, they vote someone out. Easy. Now before we actually get to what this show actually is, there needs to be some historical context of what the Total Drama fandom was and is presently. Call it padding, I hate it too, but I do think it's an important factor when we talk about Total Drama fan shows. Hey campers, what's going on? It's me, Christian Potenza. What's it like to do voices for cartoons? And this is where we do it, Studio 306. Um, and uh, well, I'm just gonna show you what, uh, what it looks like from my perspective. The Total Drama fan service used to be, emphasis on used to be, a big welcoming and fun community at the beginning of the 10ths. 2010s? Whatever. We had inside scopes of how it was to be a voice actor in the country of origin of Total Drama, interviews with voice actors and their opinions on how it was to voice their character, we had reactions of voice actors on the first day of recording for a new season, cosplay contest, presence at expos, with so much being made in the name of the show and its fans, just a little more and this could sound like a pyramid scheme. All of this can be yours in just seven days! Everything! The house! The pool, the beach, all of it can all be yours, the sun. Keep in mind that since the beginning of Total Drama, there has been a new season every single year up until 2015. The fan service started dying out considerably towards the end of 2013. For many reasons, Total Drama not being as viewed in its home country, the main channel that broadcasts Total Drama started favoring Teen Titans Go at starting at 2013, the fact that reality shows weren't as popular as they were in the 2000s, so a show where the drive was paradising them would not be as relevant, the ever-growing decrease in interest in Flash games that used to be such an important selling point to promote your shows, not being as strong as 5 years prior, so the fan service used to be an important pillar of promotion of this show. Just watch videos on YouTube, the collections of commercials for each season, the first three had impactful and polished promotions, while the rest had little to no relevant promotions whatsoever. And when the ridiculous race ended, the show went on a three year hiatus until we've gotten Total Drama Rama. During this time gap, as fan service, we only got a YouTube channel where they dumped random clips of the show with no other interesting commentary, and also announced that they would be launching all the Total Drama episodes in Spanish and Portuguese. And then Christian Potenza thought that they speak Spanish and Portugal, and then the episodes they launched were in Brazilian Portuguese! I f you, sir. 
Your Portuguese-ness is showing. No, don't get me wrong, Brazilian people. I absolutely adore the Brazilian dub of Total Drama. My personal favorite is on episode 26 of Total Drama World Tour or Drama Total Torne Mundial. When Cody drops the cage on top of Heather, she goes, Não deu bem, cara de nerd! Also, Heather says, Eu vou destruir você! <laughs> and then Cody goes, Oh, é, é, Heather. Você vai deixar o cara ganhar um milhão? And then Harold goes, Rápido, a gente não pode perder tempo! And then Heather goes, Então, eu sou a mocinha? <laughs> I really, really, really love the Brazilian dub of Total Drama. I'm, I'm teaching you guys some culture. <laughs> but imagine, imagine. Three years of waiting for a new season of a show you adore, that had its fan service dying out more and more, getting almost nothing relevant from creators that once were known to give us so many things in the past, only for you to get a babyfied version of what you wanted. I mean, don't call me an hypocrite. Don't. It was well written and it has nice humor, but thinking that this was what the fans waited patiently for three years was like a slap to the face. So with nothing relevant coming from Fresh TV because of the network's decision to babyfy the show, that which was obviously what everyone wants to see. Seriously, whoever said that... Your mom's a hoe! <laughs> the fans of Total Drama took it upon themselves to keep the show alive. Two years go by and get this, the deadly virus that locks us at home is now roaming the streets giving us lots of time to invest on projects we've always wanted to create. And in these mad times, creator Adam Blue Boy, owner of Blues Productions, came up with the idea of a new total drama taking place 15 years in the future. And you all know the concept already, I'm not gonna be telling you anything new on this part. This concept, created by a fan, for the fans, resonated so intensely that the show was a smash hit within the total drama community. This was what the fans wanted. But us watching a pirated version of Total Drama eventually led the team of Fresh TV to take legal action and shut down the passion project. Yes, it was what the fans wanted, but they used characters that were property of Fresh TV. Concrete reasons that could have led to the shutdown of the project were never really disclosed, but the use of Total Drama as branding could have been enough of a reason. Total Drama is trademarked. It was clearly never made with malintent, but the fact of the matter is this product was illegal. I have a whole video on this topic, so please if you're interested, hint hint hint. Which leads me to the channel Odd Nations Cartoons. Another passionate Total Drama fan. Now I'm not 100% sure on this, I'm just calling it like I see it. But whatever flag Total Drama Reunion got from using the characters of the original, the Odd Nations Cartoons wanted to avoid said flag at all costs. Drama Total Aventura. A season of 10 episodes that aired on YouTube from start to finish without hiccups. And there were almost no Total Drama characters. And the ones that were, were modified. Just to try to avoid any flag from legal. This passionate show almost got off scot-free. But nonetheless, Fresh TV took it down too. Again, just changing up the original characters and still profiting from it is just as bad. Not only that, but original ideas like the eliminations being made with the marshmallows and the theme musics that are ripped from the original are enough to shut down a fan show in favor of Fresh TV. So Drama Total Aventura was taken down as well. But the Odd Nations Cartoons channel fought back. A season 2 was created that slowly, but surely, corrected every single issue they had with this previous season. This time, the eliminations were more of an homage to the eliminations of Survivor. The background music that was completely ripped from the original Total Drama is not present at all anymore. And there are a lot more other details that you'll notice on how the creative team behind all this has evolved with every blow they took. However, Fresh TV took a stab at them again. And look. I was okay with Fresh TV shutting Reunion because they did indeed use property that did not belong to them. It saddened me, but adaptability is survivability. I was okay with Fresh TV shutting down Drama Total Aventura for using only slightly modified characters and creative property of Fresh TV, but man, them taking another stab at Campamento Desventura again when they did everything they could to make this more of a parody of Survivor rather than using the Total Drama content, it just feels mean. Initially, an agreement was met where the creators of Odd Nation cartoons would be able to continue this season as a webcomic, something that honestly turned me off from this show, but it would ultimately come down to YouTube to decide whether or not to continue this show in an animated format. You know, the platform that always favors its creators to decide whether Odd Nation cartoons was really not at all infringing the property of Fresh TV. Or Fresh TV was right all along and that the project should cease to be animated. 
And I think while we waited for this decision to be made by YouTube, there was a collective acceptance that YouTube was gonna favor Fresh TV on this one again. So while we were waiting for the answer, I think that everyone was accepting silently that this was the end of this venture camp. But to our surprise, YouTube for the first time I've ever seen swinged, swung, uh, in favor of the creator. They saw the efforts, they did not see Campamento de Ventura as appropriation of Fresh TV's content, and the project was greenlit and there was nothing but smooth sailing from episode 6 till the end. This even inspired the creators of Odd Nation cartoons to remake the whole season of Total Drama Adventure. And I'm gonna break my impartiality here, but honestly it felt so, so good seeing this show rise to the top. There has been so much work put into every single episode of this fan show, and seeing them rise to the top as the underdogs, it just feels so... so right. <clears throat> so now that we understand the rocky story of Campamento Desventura, let us move on to what it actually is and why you, as a Total Drama fan, might enjoy it. Campamento Desventura starts with the same way Total Drama starts to make the viewers a bit more comfortable. The cast is introduced, they start talking, they form alliances, one is clearly more abrasive and antagonistic, they even were careful enough to include a love triangle in it, which is something that has been included in every single cast of the original show in one way or the other, regardless if it makes sense or not. So yeah, on this department, All Nation Cartoons has done its homework. They studied the details of the Total Drama formula very well, but following too much a definition of the textbook can sometimes make your product be a bit unoriginal. I must warn you though, there is a lot of spoilers past this point of the video. So if you haven't watched Campamento de Ventura, I suggest that you stop right now, go watch it, and come back later. Please? With the way I'm phrasing it, it might look like this is a very boring show. And at the start, <laughs> it is very vanilla-like. And these vanilla steps are very prone to be found on any season of Total Drama. But it's these steps that allow the show to separate itself from what Total Drama was. Because the show really starts changing at a certain point and in ways that no one would actually expect when you watch Total Drama. And it's these twists that really make this show worthwhile watching. Since there are no boundaries being set by television stations on what can and can't be said, at least not to the same extent, this show is free to take routes that original seasons of Total Drama seemed afraid of taking. Same gender kisses, gory imagery, pointless nudity. And these free creative routes also apply to the narrative of the whole show. The way this show starts off made it seem like Yule would be the antagonist of this season. There are some alliances being made here and there. There are underdogs and then there is the love triangle. Same vanilla formula, but past episode 5 things start changing. The one that we thought was the antagonist turned out to be just as disposable as any other. The love triangle actually develops into a three-way friendship, and to me, it seems like Hunter is a third wheel in all this. It just got so repetitive seeing guys being the ones the girls are thirsty for. The way both Tess and Allie grow to be friends of each other and even seem to favor that friendship instead of the relationships with some bland guy is actually so freaking cool. It's funny actually, Tess never outright admits that she's in love with Hunter. She admits she likes the kiss and didn't held herself back, but her feelings were not as strong as Ali. The love triangle actually lived more in the head of Hunter in some instances. So if you are wondering, if the supposed antagonist of this show was eliminated so soon, how could this show actually be interesting? Well, the writers behind these characters built them in a way that in order for you to understand who exactly is the antagonist of this whole game, you'd have to go back and rewatch the show again in order to understand it. Through this whole show, Rhea was actually the villain of this whole thing, and it was standing in our face that she was so the whole time we were watching. Our innocent minds would never suspect a woman that accidentally isolates herself because the majority of her team members are inside a love triangle. In fact, all her actions were all clearly made to make sure she could progress through the game. Very soon in the game, this woman was responsible for almost every elimination, be it directly or not telling a real-life story to get on Connor's side so he could see she needs the, to win the game more than him, making him quit the game, <laughs> sending the supposed antagonist over to the opposite team while bringing over a member of the dominant alliance on the orange team, resulting in Maggie being eliminated, 
the other original members coming together to get rid of Yule as the newbie of the team. Telling her alliance and her friend to join another smaller alliance so that they could break apart the strongest alliance resulting in the elimination of Tess. Her vote being the swinging vote between having a tie between Rosa or Ali. And obviously her whole plot that resulted in eliminating Rosa. Her actions were really not evil, they were just strategy. Yes, she trampled a lot of people along the way, but it was just a game. She has feelings too. She was unconsciously responsible for eliminating Connor, but it doesn't mean she was using him, or she didn't even like him. She held on to the perfume he gave her, and even felt bad when she lost it. Through this show, Rhea went from an uninteresting character that it took me months until I realized she existed, to a character that I've respected on how complex she was in writing terms. It was this bland personality that made her character grow on me, and the result is that she never overstayed her welcome. Unlike some other character, I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying. This is the amazing writing and evolution you can see on Campamento Desventura. It's a show that absolutely refuses to be predictable. Not a single elimination aside from the first two was actually easy to call. Animation just gets better and better at every episode, and what makes this a nice experience to me is that the show focuses on something that made Total Drama a good show in some seasons, which is the focus on character interaction instead of the challenges. A big majority of the later seasons of Total Drama just seem to miss this kind of detail by a long shot. But I'll get to that in a future video, I promise. So, about these characters, here is now me ranking them in order. Allie. Straight off the bat, Allie was the character that most spoke to me. She looked nice and innocent, and she was nice and innocent. I really enjoyed the way she dealt with tests, and how she chose to be her friend in spite of the mutual love interest. Not enough gaming references on her part though, but her character is enjoyable. Royal. Lake. Her arc is made for you to like, and I'd say I appreciate her for the most part. I also appreciate how she stuck by Maggie till the very end, even though it was Rosa that brought the two together. I'm obsessed with Lake. Hunter. I don't care for Hunter. His character is never really that interesting for the most part, and it came off as a bit cocky when Lake was just getting to know him and he thought that she was flirting. It's an F. Kai. I think for the most part, Kai would be someone I would really not enjoy being around in some instances, especially when it came to challenges. But that's just 10%. For the most part, his character is really cool. For the time he spent on the show, he did what he had to do. Definitely top royal. Connor. He's definitely a very human character. It's rather cool how it seemed like he was giving a great piece of advice to Hunter, only for later in the series we would see that his way of thinking might have been a bit outdated. It's not that he was completely wrong, it was just his reality. He was just sharing his reality with Hunter. It's just how his character is. He's old. He's old. And for how accurate this was portrayed, I commend again the writing. Royal material. Maki? For being so silent, there was never a moment where I can say this girl stands out. I liked her, but didn't love her. Rosa. Just like Kai, her character in real life would be the kind that I would be more suspicious about. We find out it was all genuine in the end, but being that friendly so quickly makes it seem a bit forced at times. Hence why I find it hard to trust her. Carol. What can one say about Carol? She was brass, she was rude, but she was a pet lover. She's the second most two-dimensional character of this cast. I wish we could have understood why she, is she like this. I like her, but just barely. Yule. And the first two-dimensional character is Yule. This is the kind of villain that Total Drama has seen quite oftenly. He was not made for us to enjoy, so I can't really place him high on this list. But his comments are very sharp. Bueno, pues yo sí la besaría, aquí y justo ahora, ¿sabes? Y por esa facilidad de afecto, es que entraste a la maternidad tan pronto, ¿cierto? <gasps> so it's a neh for me, but it's a top neh. Tess. Tess's character was undoubtedly my favorite character. Her character for me was all that Mike never was. She was definitely a very welcome addition and sort of a, light, a loaf of fresh air to these characters. She was quiet and mellow and she has such a dark past. And on the episode where she was eliminated, seeing there was nothing she could do to save her friend group, she decided to spend her last few hours with her friends. She was definitely the strongest character of the bunch. Obsessed, Rhea. Ah, what is there to say about her that hasn't been said yet? She is definitely the best character of this show. 
Yes, she has trampled a lot of characters along the way, but that doesn't mean she didn't like any of them. Yes, Connor quit the game to save her, but she treasured the parting gift he gave her. Yes, she caused Rosa to be eliminated, but it was for her to get a much stronger power. It was never about being evil, it was, it was about winning the game. And I like that way of thinking. Obsessed. I called it from the first day James was only hanging around Aiden for the clout. Yeah, he eventually came to develop feelings for Aiden, but whatever. James is cool, but not that cool. It's a nap for me, I don't care for him. If there is a character I simply cannot care for is Aiden. I think he is meant to be a main character, but a main character that spends most of the time in the game just being fooled and throwing tantrums because he is naive is not enjoyable. I'm sorry. Next! And finally, Oliver. Oliver was just a cute innocent boy. He knew when things were getting to be too much and knew when to put a stop to it. He wants to be friends and overall he was just enjoyable. A royal. So that's it. Campamento de Sventura. If you have watched it, let me know what you think of it. Um, it's a very it's very good writing for a, if you are a total drama fan. A big shout out to Derek Jackman for helping me with this video. I really wanted to run with him what the Total Drama Reunion scandal was. I really didn't want to spread any false information, so yeah, thanks. Subscribe to that channel as well because the mysteries of Kruger Mansions really seem promising. And yeah, if you watched Campamento de Ventura, let me know all your opinions, theories, char favorite characters. Why am I wrong for not liking Aiden? Let's be real, I did think that was polemic. <laughs> uh, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. And if you I hope you enjoyed this new series. More on the way.